So question is, can a sub £30 airbrush be any good? Let's roll the credits and find out. Cheers. So guys, welcome back to the channel. And what is something that I don't really do, uh, which is a tool review um, and a test, essentially. And it's not something I do. Um, anyway, I'd heard about this, this airbrush. Um, it's been talked about um, by some fairly prominent and respected modelers over the last couple of weeks. Um, and it is the Fender. Um, so but I'm not prepared at all it is this one which is the Fender FE180K Elite Airbrush Kit available from Amazon for $23.99 I think I paid for it um, which is cheap um, it comes with a 0.2.3 needle um, it comes with an air hose in a, in a plastic storage box for $23.99 can it really be any good at that price? So that's what this video is about. We're gonna see, and we're gonna test it, we're gonna spray it, we're gonna clean it, um, and we're gonna see if it is any good for the money. Um, so yeah, if you haven't already, hit the like and subscribe, hit the little bell notification, check out all the links in the video description for all the Facebook group and all the various bits and bobs. Um, yeah, and we're gonna head down to the bench and we're, we're going to test this and we're going to see if it's any good. So there you go, come and join me at the bench. So folks, here we are with the Fender Professional High Performance Elite Airbrush Kit Pro. So this is the FAE-180K and it's telling us it's dual action gravity feed airbrush with a 9mm fluid cup or colour cup. So this one comes with the 0.2 and 0.3 needle set. It's a lovely, lovely box to be fair. Um, and there we go. It's got our common applications whiten out a little bit. So it's for illustration, custom automotive, temporary tattoos, miniatures, fine commercial art, motorcycle graphics, Models, RCs, trains, photo retouching, nail art, cosmetics, hobbies, crafts, and students. So, all of the things. Um, it's saying we can spray watercolors and acrylics, lacquers and enamels, inks, dyes, food coloring, and automotive urethanes. So, as I say, it's a lovely, lovely box. Um, it looks the part, and we've got some images of people using it there, and then the same on the, the other side. So, if we take it out of the box, and it comes in this very sturdy, nice sort of storage stroke presentation box. Um, it's telling us there that it's the model, that it's dual action, um, etc. So, it's got a little clip, open the box up, and then we've got this protective plastic uh, insert if you like and then we've got the airbrush itself so we've got a braided air hose um, which has the attachment for the compressor on this side and then a standard bit there for the airbrush itself so you get the, the air hose we get a pipette is what it is we get the airbrush itself which is this nice sort of chrome and brushed aluminium finish we get the nozzle there we get the other needle set which is the 0 0.3 so that means the 0.2 is currently in it um, so that's nicely protected in this plastic tube we get a bit of paperwork 
and we get a let's take that out, a spanner um, which I'm guessing is uh, for the the nozzle um, so yeah we get we get this spanner as well so let's get that out of the way so let's look at the the bump first um, so these are from Fender is the company um, which I believe are Dutch um, so we get this little bit there so they're imported by Airgu Europe um, which is Dutch um, so whether Fender is so Fender I believe is the manufacturer and the distributor stroke supplier is Airgu Europe uh, we've got a telephone number we've got an email address we've got a website so we've got all of the stuff should we have a problem and there we go you have a complaint it's very simple if it's defective contact us by phone or send us an email so you have got some comeback on this which for the price is good so then we've got some very basic instructions so let's turn that light away because it is whiting out slightly there we go so it's telling us we can nick the air supply add the medium to the reservoir after thinning to desired consistency we adjust the needle backstop as needed press the trigger to start airflow draw backwards gradually to release the color um, and it's telling us requires an air supply with a working pressure of one to three bar then it's telling us about the maintenance um, so we empty the paint cup and wash with water or solvent after each use use the airbrush or use an airbrush cleaning brush to remove any paint buildup fill the paint cup with water or solvent block the needle by covering with your finger and press the trigger the elbow directed backwards into the nozzle to clean any paint remaining in the airbrush uh, spray pattern is dependent on the distance between the airbrush and work surface for finalized details and smaller spray coverage hold the airbrush closer to your work surface for broad strokes and larger area coverage hold the airbrush further away um, paint will build quicker the closer it is to the surface be careful not to oversaturate the area as paint run may occur a paint run means dripping running or pulling of the paint on the surface and is generally undesired absolutely it is tell us it can be applied or applied to commercial arts illustrations photo retouching hobby and crafts um, and a, a word of warning at the bottom of precaution the airbrush nozzle thread is very thin so please screw it up to the airbrush body not too tightly otherwise it will be easily sheared there we go so we use it <laughs> so on the other side we have um, a parts diagram uh, with all the parts listed uh, which is quite nice so we, we see exactly how, what it's made up of um, and all these parts here listed so if we need a replacement part at any point I'm guessing we go off this contact them on the website jobs are good in. so the important bit then the brush itself so on first impressions it's got some weight to it it feels quite sturdy the trigger mechanism feels okay it's nice and smooth bit, bit agricultural on the on the way down to, for the air but the actual spring and everything else feels quite nice so the airbrush itself we've got almost if it, it looks and very eye water ish is what i'm getting from it straight away so what we have we have the end cap here which is almost if you can see like a bit of a crown cap um, so I'm guessing that comes off and then we've obviously got the needle exposed there so put that on carefully I don't want to bend the needle before we even started uh, we've got the color cup which we're being told is 9mm um, and then we've got the, the cap that goes on there so that's quite cool we've got a mac valve at the front um, which is nice to see so we can control the airflow we've got the standard air hose um, connector standard type um, and then the air valve obviously fits in there and then what is nice is on the back we've got a trigger pressure adjuster so basically what this allows you to do for those that don't know you can see now I, I'm not moving that at all as I release that you see that trigger pop up so we can set 
how far back this trigger goes, uh, which helps us to control the paint flow, essentially. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to take it apart. What I want to try and do is spray this out the box. I don't want to do anything to it at all. Um, so yeah, we get that. And as I say, it feels quite nice. Um, no issues so far. We then get the spare 0.3 needle, uh, which is in this plastic sort of tube sheath. Um, and then it is also protected inside. The needle is protected with it. Another bit of bit of plastic. So we've got the 0.2 in there at the minute. That's the 0.3. So we get that. We also get this will be the 0.3 nozzle, etc. Now the nozzle looks to me very Iwata esque. It's very small. Um, now I'm used to the Apex, which has sort of a self centering larger nozzle. Um, so that goes over there. I see. Oh, it's one one unit let's have a look at our part map so to speak okay so the nozzle comes out of the front okay so it looks to me like it may be some sort of sealed unit potentially now does that fit on there it does so you can have a larger crown cap if you so desire okay interesting let's put that back on there because i am so clumsy i am likely to bend this needle there we go and there's the needle exposed and that fits in the center okay Guide that in. Mm. It's a bit tricky <laughs> to say the least. So if I take that crown cap off so I can see exactly what I'm doing. Um, yeah. I'll tell you what's going to be. There we go. So release the pressure a little bit and that I don't want to over tighten this but it does feel it doesn't feel like the the thread is particularly coarse or anything like that um, it does feel quite nice and quite sort of what's the word sturdy or, or well made I would say rather than sturdy so yeah, that's the airbrush, that's our spare needle and nozzle, and the spanner. So, I think, really, proof is in the pudding, isn't it? So we'll do some spraying. So all I'm going to use, I'm just going to use some Tamiya XF19 Sky Grey, which is pre-thinned with uh, Mr. Leveling Thinner. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to spray onto this black card here. Um, the reason I'm using Tamiya is it's a paint that most people are familiar with. Most people either use or have used it. So it, it's sort of a known known quantity. Um, every, well, I'm certainly used to spraying this. So I can judge it better rather than using some paint I've never used before. Um, I can judge this against what I've used before using the same medium. So... We'll come back and we'll do some we'll do some spraying. See you in a minute. Okay, so let's see how this thing sprays. So I've connected it uh, to its own air hose. I haven't used a quick release coupler or anything like that. In fairness, I'm spraying it as um, out the box, so using all their stuff, nothing different. Um, it's connected to the compressor of the air hose, uh, I think it's about two meters in length, so it's nice and length. So we'll open the color cup 
Um, and here we have the XF19 that I've just decanted into a medicine cup, the same way I always do. Use a pipette, and then I'm just going to put a little bit inside it there. Place the colour cup, or the cap rather, and we'll just spray it. So the compressor is set to about 20 psi. Uh, Mac valve is as a of the uh, the box, so we're getting air, which is good news. And here we go. So this is with the point two, and it sprays so far. Very nice. Um, and that's just this is the first time I've used it, so we're, we're pretty cool. You can hear the compressor going. Let's have a bit more paint. This is with the point two. We'll go for a bit more, a heavier sort of coat now. And you know what? It sprays absolutely lovely. No issues whatsoever. So a good test of, of how thin we can get it. Bear in mind this is the point, uh, point two. So yeah, I'm. That's with the the needle pulled right back, so as heavy as we can go. That one there is is thin, and with a bit of practice, I'm pretty sure. We could get almost pencil thin lines with this, no problem whatsoever. Just as I say, with a bit of bit of practice, the first time I've used it. And test and adjust with your pressure, etc. But there you go. That's not a bad test at all. First time, it's straight out of the box. And there we go. I am impressed with that. It feels quite comfortable in the hand. It's got the finger rest there. Um, it sprays absolutely fine. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's any need for me to, to test the point 0.3 needle. Um, because it's just going to give you a slightly bigger spray pattern, obviously. Um, but yeah, it sprays absolutely lovely. No issue. That's all of that. Wow. I'm impressed. I am impressed. So, obviously after we've sprayed, next thing we need to worry about is cleaning. Um, so I'm used to the Apex, um, which is a joy to clean. Um, it's really simple. It's a, it's a really easy airbrush to maintain, um, which is one of the major appeals to me. Um, rather than sort of the more complex um, airbrushes etc um, yeah so I'm just messing about I'm just emptying this colour cup um, and that's with the needle pulled right back um, as I say the compressor is set to uh, 2 bar or 20 psi pretty much smack bang in the middle of what they recommend and then obviously we've got this MAC valve so we can Increase the air or tighten it right up. And 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 use that rather than have to touch our touch our compressor at all really. Uh, which is 
much more convenient. Um, the Apex doesn't actually have a Mac valve. So that's, that's air off now, as you can see. So we can really test and adjust. A little bit of spit in there, but that's user error. That's, that's nothing to do with the So that's me getting used to it. Yeah, really cool. Really cool. I like it a lot. I'm impressed. Um, so let's empty the rest of that paint. There's still a fair bit in there. We don't want to just waste paint for the sake of it. There we go. So the way I would normally clean clean a brush um, is first of all decant some cleaner into the color cup. Um, so I'm using Sprubox Airbrush Cleaner, which is just an acrylic airbrush cleaner. Uh, so I'm going to decant that into there. And then we're just going to use my manky old paintbrush. And we're just going to give that a good wipe around the inside of the colour cup. There we go. And then we're just going to turn the Mac valve. <laughs> Spray that through. Now I am aware that I'm not using a spray booth or an extractor at this point. Um, I'm sure the health and safety police jump all over me. The reason I'm not, firstly this is an acrylic, although I'm using like a thinner for the paint. Um, and I really wanted to, to try and show it as best I could. And I would find that difficult with camera setups and the spray booth, etc. Uh, to show that this level. So as a one-off, I have a bench vent. So what we're getting there, we can see we're getting that bubbling around the nozzles. So let me tighten that up a little bit. So we didn't get that when we were actually using the paint, but I'm going to do a kitchen roll clean that before it dries. So that just tells me that I hadn't tightened it quite enough. We didn't get it, as I say, with the paint, but now we're, we're putting the cleaner through, we were. Um, but yeah, it's working absolutely fine. So bear in mind, this is a 0.2 needle. And I've put a lot of cleaner in there. So for two reasons. Firstly, I, I do want to clean it. You don't need that much cleaner. Um, but I just want to get used to that trigger action. And this is an ideal way of doing it, like wasting paint. Just getting out, I'm not getting any thinner. There we go. Now I'm getting cleaner, coming through. This is what we want. I think we've got a little bit of a blockage there, but we've managed to clear it by just back blowing it ever so slightly. So straight away, it's not quite as simple to clean as the Apex. There we go. So there's clearly some sort of stubborn, stubborn paint in the nozzle there. But it is, it is spraying or cleaning fine. Whatever was there has gone, which is good news. So what we'll do, we'll 
upgrade all this cleaner tree. Okay, there we go. Color cup is nice and empty. So what we'll do is give that a nice wipe just with some kitchen paper. And yeah, it's, it's a nice wide opening color cup. Um, so you can get right in there. That's quite nice. And then we'll put a little bit more cleaner in. Now what I want to do is backflow that now. So we'll know if we're getting it right because we'll get bubbling in the colour cut. But because we've got this crown crown cap on to get that seal quite difficult. Mm. Yeah, I mean it's different. It's different to, there we go. So we're getting that bubbling. Now what we don't want to do is spray this back through the airbrush. So I'll just tip that out, get rid of that, give that a wipe again. Clear that all the way out of there, which is fine. So yeah, we're getting air. So tiny drop of cleaner now and just make sure that we're spraying through which we are I'll pull out my a bit there we go so cleaning as I say it's not difficult at all uh, but it's not quite as straightforward as the apex but that's because I've used the apex for years I think so it's kind of second nature with, with the cleaning um, so let me put my color cap back on now what I want to do is take off this rear bit here which is this brushed aluminium bit here so we've taken that off um, needle release is there now what that should allow me to do is just take this needle out and just give it a real you know quick wipe That's not tap. so if i just push that forwards what i try and do if i can is take the needle out through the front of the airbrush rather than the rear and the reason for that is that i don't risk damaging the needle as i'm dragging it through the body of the airbrush so essentially that's that's all I'm trying to do there. Um, so we'll get a cotton bud or Q-tip, depending where you are in the world. Oh, excuse me. There we go. And all I'm going to do is just a little bit of airbrush cleaner onto the Q-tip, and I'm just going to give that. A nice clean wipe. We have got a little bit of paint build up there. Gently around the tip of the needle because you don't want to damage it. Um, the needle doesn't look too bad, to be fair, as in the quality of the needle. It looks alright. Um, I know I've never actually owned one, um, but a lot of people have said with these sort of cheaper 
airbrushes you know you need to polish the needle um, to get get it to work and to be honest that isn't too bad at all I don't think that needs polishing um, and you see me spray it I, it wouldn't do any harm polishing it you're not you're not going to do anything bad um, but if you don't want to or whatever it, do, it doesn't need it um, from what I've seen so far so there we go so we're going to set the needle back into the body again I'll try and go through the front if I can there we go dead simple let's check that we've got a little bit of paint build up there so we'll just get rid of that nice and clean Do us uh, I'll place that over the needle again, and I'll make sure this time I do it up a little bit tighter than I did last time because we've got that, that sort of bubbling around the seal. Still, only really finger tight, and then we'll push the needle so it sits where it should. Nice and secure. Again, finger tight. Make sure we've got air, which we have. Jobs are good in. So let me get rid of that because that's just rubbish, dirty. Get rid of that. And there we go. There it is, the Fengber 180 or FE 180K. Look at all that paint I've missed there, <laughs> that aside. Oh dear me. Let's get rid of that. Just again, it's a bit of cleaner and that will come off, he says. Yeah, lovely. Brand new airbrush, minging already. But they are tools, so I don't get, as long as they work, I don't get too precious about, oh, it's dirty, or, you know, they're tools, they're meant to be used. Um, I, don't, I don't get all precious about them. And at this price, I'm certainly not going to get precious about it. Um, yeah. So, while I just get rid of this, I'll turn the camera off. Um, I'll get it all sorted, there we go, and then I'll go back face the camera and, and final thoughts on it really, so uh, I'll see you in a minute. So there we go, the test is complete and I have to say I'm impressed. For, for the money, it's a bit of a no-brainer, to be honest. I mean, here, here she is. Um, all clean now. Um, yeah, well, I don't know what else to say. You've seen it. You've seen it spray. You've seen what you get in the box. You've seen me clean it. Um, other than me being able to, to sort of show you how it feels, which I can't. Um, it's, it's an absolute recommend. Um, go and get one. Uh, I'll put a link an Amazon link it's not an affiliate link or anything like that just a link to this um, in the video description but it is phenomenal for that money I don't, I don't know how they do it really um, and knowing that there's a website where you can get spare parts um, just yeah it's a no-brainer and it, it's lovely I can't I can't put it down um, it's, it, you know, less than £25 delivered 
and that's what you get. It lasts you six months, you know. It's less than the price of a coffee a month uh, with a 0.2 and 0.3 needles there. Bit of a no-brainer, guys, but uh, yeah, it's a recommend for me, absolutely. Um, so I'll put all the links in the description below. So I'll put a link to that on Amazon, and I'll also put a link to, I think they're called Fen Fender, to their website, um, so you can have a look. As I say, I'm not affiliated to them or anything like that. It's just, you know, this is something that I was interested in trying. I'm so glad I did. Um, and if I can pass a bit of that sort of experience on to you guys, then uh, yeah. But it's, it's an absolute recommend for me. I like it a lot. So um, there we go. I will see you next time. Until then, stay safe. Happy hobbying. Bye-bye.